Today I'm going to show you how automatic power windows work. So to get a better view of how the power windows work, I'm going to cut open this door. So with the door skin removed, we can see how the door is made up. We've got some side impact intrusion bars here. We've got some reinforcement metal that goes across here. And then we have the interior door panel. Now the window regulator, which is what we're going to focus on, is mounted to that interior panel. Now if we take a close look at the window regulator here, we've got this horizontal bar that goes across and it keeps the glass straight relative in its track. Then we have this arm over here that does all the heavy lifting and it basically takes the rotational motion of the motor and turns it into translational motion as it slides back and forth. Now the window regulator has a built-in sensing circuit that allows the motor to know when to stop when the window reaches all the way down or all the way up for one touch, auto down or up. Now I'm just going to flip this door around so we can actually remove this window actuator from the door assembly. Now over here on the back of the door there's just four 10 millimeter bolts that I need to remove. The window is now dropping all the way down. Now at the glass here, there's a 10 millimeter bolt that I need to remove. And now at the bottom here, I can slowly remove the window regulator from the door panel itself. And now with the regulator free, I can move the glass up and down in its track. And you can see just how it's guided all the way down to the bottom. There's actually two 10 millimeter bolts that hold this rail over here that hold the glass into the door. Now at the top of this door pillar here, there's actually a Phillips screw that I'm going to remove. And now once this track is free, I'm just gonna pick it away from the glass like this and get the glass off of the truck. Here we have all the relevant components laid out here with the regulator that bolts to the window over here, the window itself and its track. You see the electric motor here actually has five wires that go inside with these two fatter wires carrying most of the current and these ones just being signal wires. The motor itself is actually a separate piece from the regulator. Now to demonstrate this window regulator working I'm going to put 12 volts to the leads here and you can see how it moves and then it comes to a complete stop at the end. If we take a look at the overall system diagram of the power window controls on this car, we have the main driver switch over here and that sends its signals out to the body control unit which then distributed out to the passenger and rear windows accordingly. Each window itself has its own motor and encoder circuit built in so it can control itself. We've also got the body control unit that supplies power when the ignition is turned off. Now I'm going to remove the motor from the regulator so we can have a closer look inside. And with those screws removed I can release this motor here and you can see this is the pinion gear that drives the actual window regulator. Now if I just apply straight up voltage you see that the motor rotates infinitely. So here we have the window regulator with this top portion over here connecting to the glass at this pivot point. And then we have one giant pivot point here with four bolt holes. We've also got this quarter gear over here that has teeth on it that engage with the teeth on the window motor itself to actually move this from side to side. And of course because you have this contact point here this needs to be well lubricated in order to not seize up. So here we have the motor and you can see we've got this gear that locks onto the regulator that is now locked due to the gearing inside of here and that's basically what prevents your window from being forced downward. Now at the top here where the glass connects we have a little ball joint and slide mechanism. This has to be well lubricated as well. So I'm just going to release these little tabs on the end here and then I can slide this mechanism straight out. And this video is about to get really greasy so I'm just going to use my brother's freshly stolen underwear here to wipe off some of that grease in the track. Now the edge of this mechanism is pretty interesting. It has a little bit of a swing to it and a rotation. So presumably this provides a little bit of cushioning for when it slides in the track. Now the window regulator has these two power wires that power the motor itself and they work in opposite polarity to either move the window up or down. However there are three other wires on the side here that actually go to a limit switch and an encoder. Now here's the back of the mechanism where it attaches to the limit switches are. There's just these clips around here that I'm going to remove so we can have a closer look. And so I'm just going to pry on that clip over there. So I'm just going to open up that seal getting sticky in there. So with that open up there you can see there's this really sticky stuff for waterproofing. Boy is it gonna get really greasy. I'm just gonna wipe that off with my brother's old underwear again. Now inside of each one of those window switches is a little CPU that controls the window. Inside of the window regulator we have the motor. We've also got an encoder as well as a limit switch. Now if we take a closer look at this encoder over here you can see we have these two terminals that contact the inner ring over here for this one and the outside ring over here which actually has these slots on it for this line over here that leads to the blue wire. Now a constant ground is supplied to this line over here and a pulse signal is going to be generated to ground through this blue line over here. Now the two prongs on the outside here actually don't touch the ring on the inside here and correlate to the ring on the limit switch. Now if we take a close look at that limit switch you'll see that we have these little gears inside of here driven off of the final gear ratio of the motor. We've got this outer conductive ring here that has this little stop when it reaches the end. We've also got this little gap in the conductivity of this ring here. So when those two prongs on the motor down below actually 
stop conducting with each other, the motor and the CPU is then going to know to stop supplying power because the window has reached its utmost limit. However, when these two are conducting, that means that it hasn't reached its limit yet and the window is somewhere in between. Now the CPU will then use this as a closed loop control system. So for example, if the window is automatically going up and my brother decides to stick his hand out the window, it's going to sense it and slow down and reverse the polarity on the motor to allow the window to go back down a little bit so my clumsy brother can pull his hand out of the way. Now while the encoder is good at telling the instantaneous speed of the motor, the limit switch comes into play to know its position when it's all the way at the top, especially when the battery has been reset. Now I'm going to pry off this encoder here so we can have a look at what's underneath. And you can see that's where it interfaces with the encoder. The encoder itself is just plastic with a printed conductor on it. Now I'm going to slowly take apart this limit switch here, but now inside of this limit switch here you can see we have these two planetary gears or a planet carrier as well as a ring gear that actually rotates the conductive ring on the outside to operate the switch. Now because the motor itself actually has many turns before the glass can move from the bottom to the top the reason for this gear reduction is to actually have the ring move around only one rotation for the limit switch as the glass moves from the bottom to the top. And underneath we have this little spring washer here that keeps a little bit of tension on that gear. I'm going to further disassemble the gear train of this motor here by removing all of these little tabs on the side here. And I'll just lift off that metal cover here and you can see what we got inside. This thing is a lot more complicated than I thought. And inside of this motor mechanism we have this metal drive plate over here that's locked to the final gear over here. Now if I remove this metal plate you can see we have this damper kind of mechanism in here and we have the final drive that's now unlocked which means that all of the rotational energy actually has to come through this plate over here. It goes through this damper. We have this little rubber piece inside of here that sits in this final gear and then we have the actual plastic drive gear itself which is also reinforced on this one side. Now the damping only works in one direction. You can see the teeth here are directional and the reinforcements inside of the plastic here are also on one side only. Now when I put all this back together it actually corresponds to the motor moving up and that makes sense because if something pinches it's actually going to go through this damper here before the limit switch and encoder kicks in to cut the motor power. Here's the little final drive gear and now with the casing fully stripped down I'm just going to remove the three Phillips screws that hold the motor assembly on itself. And now I can remove this housing here. I can pull out the shaft. So here we have the motor armature with all the coils inside. We've also got these three surfaces over here that act as bearing surfaces for this entire thing to rotate about. Now this motor is actually balanced by gouging out pieces in the armature here so it's balanced with the other side. That way when it rotates it doesn't vibrate. We've got the commutator over here where the brush is actually right up against. Now speaking of brushes, if you follow these two power wires inside of the housing here, you'll see that we have the two brushes that are actually spring loaded and sit inside of the middle of where the shaft would rotate. Now these are probably the highest wear points in any electric motor. So likely if your motor doesn't work, you probably need to replace these brushes because they're just worn out. And inside of here you have the stator magnet. Now because of the nature of the spiral gear, the motor is allowed to rotate the final drive gear, but the final drive gear is not allowed to rotate the motor because there's just too much friction and that's what prevents the window from just being forced down. So the next time you wind up your car window think of all of these components that go into making it work. Make sure you follow me on Instagram for more behind the scenes footage and subscribe for more videos just like this one.